Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mindy here. I hope you had an amazing weekend and you're off to the start of a fantastic week. So today I'm going to jump into a brand new perfume release from the House of Parfums de Marly and that is Oriana. I was able to get this sample off of one of the forums that I follow for perfumery and I'm super excited to share my thoughts with you today. I have other perfumes de Marly fragrances that I'm madly in love with, specifically Delina. There was tons of hype over that fragrance for quite some time and that's because it really is a gorgeous perfume. I'm also really intrigued and blown away really by some of the masculine fragrances, at least they're marketed to men, that is Leighton and Herod. Both are fantastic fragrances as well. I feel that Parfums de Marly has really set the bar high. They make really gorgeous scents and they really appeal to a lot of different people. They really have something for everyone. And so every release that Parfums de Marly has, I have a feeling I'll be really excited to learn more about and dig into. So a disclaimer, what I'll be sharing about this fragrance today will be my first impressions. I've had it on my hand for about four hours. I'm gonna go ahead and respray it on my other hand as well so that the scent profile is fresh in my mind, but I do reserve the right to change my mind in the future. I do tend to play around with fragrances. Once I form an initial opinion, I do like to explore them a little bit further and really continue to establish my thoughts on them and potentially my thoughts change. So I will give you a spoiler alert. This is not one that I'll be moving forward with a full bottle of. So for that reason, today's video, today's review will be structured in the format of five reasons I will not be purchasing the Oriana fragrance from Parfums de Marly. So if that interests you, please stay tuned and we will jump right in. All right, the first reason that I will not be moving forward with a full bottle of Oriana is because this fragrance is not a love for me. Spoiler alert, this perfume is not a love. There have been other fragrances that I've played around with from the House of Parfums de Marly that were not a love at first sniff. I'm looking at you, Delina. I didn't love that one from initial spray because it can be a little bit sharp. It's a little bit overpowering. The rhubarb and lychee can be a little bit sour. But after that was on my skin for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I was completely mesmerized by the scent and I really did fall in love with it. That is not the case with Oriana. I've sprayed it. I like it. I find it to be very nice. It's inoffensive. It's a type of fragrance that I think a lot of people will like. But at the same time, there is nothing screaming about this one that I need to have it in my collection. After wearing it about four hours on this hand and just spraying it on this hand, of course, I really find the fragrance to be about a six out of 10. If I'm being really generous, I would say a seven out of 10, but I do think this one is more like a six out of 10 for me. And for me to bring something in my collection, I'm sort of setting a new standard that it has to be an eight out of 10 for me to really consider. There's nothing about this one that screams that I can't live without it, sadly. And so that's the first reason why I will not be buying a full bottle. So the second reason I will not be buying this fragrance is because of the composition. I've heard other people say that there is a strong citrus presence and I now know exactly what they're talking about. Now the citrus in this fragrance is mandarin orange, grapefruit, there's bergamot. In the middle of the fragrance there's also orange blossom, raspberry, and black currant. And then in the base is whipped cream, marshmallow, musk, and ambrette. Now when I say I'm not crazy about the composition, that really starts with some of those citruses. I don't know if the grapefruit is a little bit sharp or something like the orange, it's overpowering to my nose. But I'm really not crazy about the first 10, 15 minutes of the scent. It smells a little bit, just a tiny bit, like a cleaning supply, but also almost like a fabric softener of sorts, um, just a little bit. And that does dissipate after a while where I start to pick up more of the whipped cream, more of the marshmallow in the fragrance. But that's the other thing about this one. I like the marshmallow in here. It's kind of a powdery marshmallow. It might be a little bit floral and maybe a little bit fruity. I like the scent of it, but there's again, nothing about it that makes me feel like I absolutely need to have it. As this settles more and more into my skin and it's on my skin for at least 20, 30 minutes, I do find that I'm enjoying the fragrance. The citrus sort of dissipates quite a bit and really goes into the background of this one. The scent profile becomes more appealing to me. 
but I just feel like there's something missing to my nose. I want more of that whipped cream. I want more of that marshmallow to come out. I want more of those gourmand aspects to really shine through in this one. So the second reason I will not be buying this perfume is simply the composition and it just feels like something is missing to me. So the third reason that I will not be moving forward with the full bottle of Oriana is simply because of the price point. At the price point of $320, I expect to be moved by a fragrance. I expect to be mesmerized, I expect to be inspired, I expect to sort of be blown away. And like I said before, my logic is to bring a perfume into my collection at this point, it needs to be an eight out of 10 or better. I've had too many blind buy fails in my past now, and I'm looking at decluttering so much that I don't really wanna go through that again. I'm being more targeted, and in this case, I'm really glad that I bought a sample of this perfume instead of buying a full bottle. I tend to find myself a little bit practical when it comes to spending and of course my perfumery hobby has thrown that out the window and I do get a little crazy with my spending here but again I'm trying to be more practical and exploring fragrances before I pull them into my collection. One other thing that I'll say about that price point is that when you're gonna spend that type of money on a perfume, I really think you should be getting the whole package. You should be getting the longevity. You should be getting the projection. You should be getting the scent that you absolutely adore. And in this case, I really do feel like the projection is lacking. It's still on my skin and I can pick it up after four hours. It does fade out to a skin scent around that two hour mark. The projection just isn't there and I would expect more from a fragrance with this price point. The fourth reason that I will not be moving forward with a full bottle of Oriana is simply because of the comparisons to Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. Now, when a fragrance comes out in that price point again, I do feel like it should be very unique. It should have its own identity and it shouldn't have a lot of similarities to other fragrances already on the market. Now, I find it to be different from Love Don't Be Shy, but I absolutely pick up on some parallels. I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison yet. I'd love to do a This Not That Epic Fragrance Battle video in the future, but for now, from what I remember from Love Don't Be Shy, I do feel like I enjoy that scent profile quite a bit more than this one. But again, that one is soft on sillage and I really wanted to explore others like it. I really want to check out The Extreme and some other fragrances by Memo Paris. But as it stands now, because of that comparison to Love Don't Be Shy, I'm not particularly interested in a full bottle of this one because I pick up some similarities and I don't think this is unique enough to have in my collection at this point in time. Okay, so number five on my list, and another reason I won't be moving forward with Oriana in a full bottle, is because I have high expectations for Parfums de Marly. Again, Parfums de Marly has really set the bar high in their standards for fragrance. They have some very beautiful, amazing perfumes out on the market. They have a very high price point and they can command that price point because the products they make are so good. In this case, I don't feel like the quality of this fragrance meets my expectations. The scent profile of this one does not meet my expectations. And part of that is that this just isn't my style. Because of some of the other fragrances that I mentioned before that this house has released, I really do have quite high standards for future releases from this house and I expect all of the fragrances that they release to really wow me on the level that some of the others have. This perfume sadly did not wow me on that level. Again, I think it's very nice. I think it's very crowd pleasing. I do think a lot of people would truly enjoy this one. But when you hear people say, oh no, you don't need this if you already have love, don't be shy. I've heard that a few times now. I really don't think that that makes this unique enough and desirable enough for someone like me to pull into my collection. Again, this is really the first day that I played around with this fragrance and I do reserve the right to change my mind in the future, but much like Delina La Rose, I haven't changed my mind on that one. I feel pretty strong about my opinions on this one so far. I don't think this is one that I'll want to add to my collection simply because of the performance and because it's not a scent profile that I enjoy on the same level as others that I've tried. 
I'm really interested to hear what other people are experiencing from this fragrance. I have watched a couple reviews, but oftentimes it's really cool to hear what other people who have similar tastes and preference to you are experiencing from a fragrance. So if you guys have tried this and you tend to like fragrances similar to me, please let me know what you're thinking about this one. I definitely want to hear what your thoughts are and how you're receiving this fragrance and what your interpretation of the scent profile is. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I truly appreciate you. If you enjoyed this review on the brand new released Oriana by Parfums de Marly, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, and I hope you have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. Until next time, I'll see you soon.